Well, at first, it all started out for me. Um, I just used to, you know, get stock footage from online, and I'd just mess around with because uh, how film was introduced to me, I just, like, kind of fell in love with it, just watching movies over and over again. And I was like, and then I heard uh, what film editors do, and I decided to download uh, Premiere Pro without the SCAD student discount. It was expensive. But, um, and then I just download stock footage and music and just mess around with it. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest. I have Hayes Griffin. He is actually the editor of The Creative Truth. Yes, I do. For, uh, the past... Since January. Yeah. So six months, seven months, no, longer than that. Eight. Yeah, this will drop in um, early September. So, yeah, for it'll be like nine months. Yeah, nine months when this episode goes up. Wow, that time flies. Seriously. So, yeah. to uh, the first question I always ask, as you know, is, uh, you know, how has where you're from shaped the creative professional you are today? Like, as far as where I'm from, like in South Carolina? Yeah. Um, there, was, there wasn't a lot of film opportunities where I grew up uh so and I've always been the type of person that like wanted I've always wanted to do something different than most of my peers and they were like the type of kids that were going to Clemson and you know South Carolina to do like engineering or nursing like a lot of my friends are now engineers or nurses and that that sort of stuff like those kind of jobs never like attracted my attention so I've always wanted to express my creativity more than others. And that's kind of like what led me to SCAD. What was like the first little bug of like something you did that was creative that you're like, all right, that sounds like something I could do for the rest of my life or whatever. Um, well, at first it all started out for me. Um, I just used to, you know, get stock footage from online and I just mess around with because, uh, how film was introduced to me, I just like kind of fell in love with it, just watching movies over and over again. And I was like, and then I heard uh, what film editors do. And I decided to download uh, Premiere Pro without the SCAD student discount. It was expensive. But, um, and then I just download stock footage and music and just mess around with it. And that's how I've improved my editing skills over the years is just by doing it. And that's the best teacher in my, in my opinion. So. What kind of movies, like what kind of movies were you, did you like and watch a lot back then? A lot of science fiction, like narrative films, uh, you know, anything Spielberg, George Lucas, Martin Scorsese, um, Ridley Scott, you know, those kind of movies that are heavily, uh, I guess, visual effects. I don't know. just like, Especially like Star Wars, you are in a w- whole different world that doesn't exist, but somehow I'm trying to feel how I want to word this. Um, it's just a completely new idea that everybody, when they first heard of the idea that Lucas had of Star Wars, they were like, "This guy's crazy. He's gonna make a movie about space." And there's just no, there's no way it would work, and he made it work. And those are the type of movies that like. I like so I guess they're movies that you know push the medium forward Mm. in a way Mm -hmm. is what I'm attracted to that's like the movies I want to work on you ever see uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey yes I have actually not the whole thing though surprisingly enough because it is like one of those science fiction movies that like if you're into science fiction you've definitely seen 2001 Space Odyssey but um my favorite you know yeah just heavily I watched a lot of Spielberg and Lucas movies mm. over the years, um, and that's kind of like what led me to film. And then I also had a, um, I guess there was a there was a guy uh, who I used to play soccer with in high school. Uh, he he was into film and photography, and he uh, just graduated from College of Charleston. And uh, I guess he kind of like inspired me a little bit to do it as well and to just not be afraid to do it he actually just got done uh he worked on outer banks uh yeah. the netflix series yeah and um he actually just he was at scad speaking at a uh event a couple months ago but uh 
yeah, he was, I saw him starting to do it. And so it kind of like made me even more confident to go that route as well. So, yeah. So for people listening, SCAD is the Savannah College of Art and Design. It's been around for what, like 40 years? Yeah, uh, 43 years at this point. Yeah, my freshman year was its like 40th anniversary. And so. it's it doesn't have like a set campus. It's like space. It's all spread out Savannah. all over the city. Um, like there's a lot of uh, buildings that are, you know, close to the river that are on Indian Street. And then... There's some that, you know, go all the way out to Victory Road. And, you know, that's, it's not far, but it's probably like a, from the river to Victory Road, it's probably miles. like three or four miles. Yeah. And every everything is like, yeah, it's just so spread out. Like, there's SCAD buildings next to my house, and I'm like, if I ever have a class there, like, I literally can wake up ten minutes before class and just head over. But... Um, yeah, it's very spread out. Like a lot of colleges aren't, they have like their own, uh, area mm-hmm. that they keep to themselves, but SCAD isn't that way. And I kind of like it. I kind of, it's just kind of annoying getting around, you know, to places, uh, especially, um, when school is back in, it seems like there's like traffic just gets worse. There's no parking in the downtown areas. So th- that kind of, that aspect of it doesn't really appeal to me, but did you um, look at other schools? Not many. I looked looked at Clemson, uh, but again, I was just I didn't want to do that. Any they didn't offer anything that I wanted to do, and so like when the pro, when the uh, process of me looking at schools started, uh, I found SCAD actually very uh, early on in that process, and I just kind of like fell in love with it because I knew they would offer me something that I really wanted to do. And that's the biggest thing for me is can't be miserable doing what you do. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's not about the money or anything like that. It's just, do you enjoy doing what you love? So what kind of, like, facilities and equipment do you get to work with going to SCAD? Um, We have everything, basically, at our disposal. Uh, I, We have, like, Mac Labs for editing. Um... There are rotoscope, or you know, for vi- in the visual effects uh, world, they have like um, compositing labs and you know things for rotoscoping. Uh, we have pretty much any camera that you desire. We have access to. Um, like we just a project this summer, we shot on a, a a red Gemini, which is insane to me because you know those things are really expensive, and mm-hmm. I never thought that. You know, at least in this stage, I never thought I'd be working with, like, equipment like that. But it's really, like, le- it's less about the equipment, though. It's more about the people that make it with, like, you, equipment's just the tool. Like, it's, the pe- it's you, the artist, and all the people involved in it that are actually making the product. And so that's what sticks out to me over the equipment. But, um, yeah, we, we do, it, it does help to have all that at our disposal because not a, not a lot of people get that opportunity and they're actually building a uh, it's just over there next door they're building that huge uh, new uh, film set I guess is what you would call it um, Studio City yeah Studio thing? City something like that like a real uh, it's kind of it kind of looks like the Warner Brothers studio if you've ever mm-hmm. seen that like um, where they have uh, places to make it seem like that the settings in Chicago or New York or Los Angeles, but I don't think it's going to be done until I'm after I'm graduated, which kind of sucks, but they're also getting like this led wall for, um, you know how the Mandalorian was shot. Yeah. Um, like extended reality. Yeah. Extended reality. Like yeah. that's instead of like using green screens to do it for you. I mean, we're just, why can't you project an image of, sort of that reality uh for the show it just it just makes it's gonna make making films easier and i'm like really excited for uh like i kind of wonder sometimes how many times i'm gonna come back and visit scad just to use the stuff that they have available for us can you do that as as an alumnus yeah like they that's something that um scad's really good about i think is like one even after you graduate like you're still like a scad student i mean you're technically not but like in their eyes, like you could uh, find other people to work with, 
Um, I even have access after I graduate. I'll still have uh, access to like uh, counselors and tutoring. Not even, not really much tutoring, but counselors. Career advice. Yeah, like career advice. Yeah. Like whether it's building resumes or cover letters or you know demo reels, um, which is like also really comforting. That like they just don't you know send you off in the world and be like okay never gonna see you again but like they they thrive or they want us to come back for their help you know even if have you worked with alumni scat alumni um scat alum no but we do have i have worked a lot with you know independent filmmakers who you know are sending their films out to festivals and um i just actually cut a trailer for uh it was actually from one of my film class or yeah film classes last quarter um during the spring uh these two independent filmmakers at a they were they made a film in miami and uh they somehow knew our professor i don't really know how they knew each other but um they uh we had like an assignment for this class where we uh so there was like a creative assets team which is the team I was on you know we were responsible for movie posters and uh, trailers and then there was a whole nother team for like uh, social media and then a whole nother team for like marketing it was it was an intense it was an intense project and uh, that was you know in that sort of way SCAD like connects me with other people who who don't even go to SCAD who are just like independent filmmakers who have already you know kind of proven themselves in the industry and uh, I think it's great that we uh, get to do that and then there's like the uh, so many ways of networking at SCAD which is always a good thing there's the film festival there I mean just living in Savannah you're gonna connect with people I feel like what do you like about post, uh, post-production post editing, video editing over uh, production itself? I, yeah, I've never, I've never really liked being on set. So it's, and also the part, the part of editing that, that I like is the idea that, you know, the movie's actually coming together in the editing room. You can see it coming together in front of your eyes. And that's really cool to me. Like, because when you receive the raw files from a camera, it's just like something they shot on a camera, and then once you see the final product, you're like, "Wow, how could how did how do you do that? How do you take it from just a raw flat image and you know add effects to it and you know make it what you see like with movies?" It's it just astounds me like the whole there's because I've learned a lot since being here, mm-hmm. but I've also learned that I have a long way to go with this whole editing thing. There's a there's so much to it that uh, I didn't think about, and that's also what keeps me going is like learning the new things about it, and you know, uh, and when new technologies come out, like how is that going to improve like my workflow and you know my way of doing things and. Uh, and also, how does it make it more difficult? But, um, yeah. Like dealing with massive file sizes. Yes. Which is um, we've been working on. Yeah. We, uh, there was this, the, a current project I'm working on right now uh, was shot in 6K. And it was with the Red Gemini. And um, those files are massive. Like, we're using proxies in the, uh, in the project. And I've never worked with proxies before. And, but... I've so far that I've found that it's made my life so much more easier uh, for the process, and it, I kind of for a project of because it's going to be forty minutes long, so it's a big, it's kind of a big project. I've never really done a project of that size, and so like I'm, you know, in the long run, the proxies are supposed to help us with that, you know, kind of uh, not having to deal with you know six K footage in the timeline, you know, like that's. And you're it responsible would, for like certain sequences or the whole forty minutes? Uh, yeah. So there's, um, I'm actually technically one of the assistant editors. Uh, we have one other editor right now who's going to be, you know, cutting it up as well. Um, yeah. So we we do divide the work up. Yes. Uh, especially for a film of that length, I feel like that you kind of have to. I mean, it's just a 
dealing with the visual effects is just going to make it so much more uh, complicated, I think. But you know, it's great. It's it's going to be a good learning experience, and like it's it it just feels like a more professional workflow. I guess. So, what's what the long term goal? You think you ultimately want to work in, on on like sci fi narrative type features, or do you? Well, want I'm not going to restrict it to sci fi, but yeah, definitely like big budget movies. Uh, but at the same time, I love like editing for online content as well. I love editing the podcasts. I love. There's not too many things out there that I don't like editing. So it's in that way, it's. Like, I guess I, I really don't know for sure what I'm going to be doing after graduation. But, you know, I've always seen myself, like, editing the big movies, the $250 million movies with big budgets. Um, and just, like, I've also, one thing I've never done was music videos. I still haven't done that to this day. And um, I know that, there's a lot of people at SCAD that are, you know, are into music videos and they're really good at it and they're connecting with these artists. And I'm like, there's not too many. So I'm trying to, how am I trying to word this? Uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, well, we were talking about narr basically, you wanted to work oh, right. on like, long form stuff. Yeah, like. Music videos to me seem, I'm not trying to take away anything from anybody who edits music videos or who makes them, but like that they, they don't seem as, as much like of a, they don't seem as thought out as like a long two and a half hour movie, you know, like from well, music first pre-production I mean, all the way to first. post. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I guess if the music video is more, uh, complex and like, um, What's the word? I forgot what they call it. I guess I'll just, I'll just call it complex for now. But if, like, the music video is more complex and it has, like... Because some music videos are just... They don't really have a story. They mm -hmm. have... It's just kind of sometimes to make the artist look cool. And so that really doesn't appeal to me. So, but, like, when I see music videos that are, you know, have, like, a kind of a backstory to them and you know, are more well thought out. I'm like, okay, that's, that's something I could see myself doing or editing. But, um, I, I mean, I, I respect all people who, no matter what kind of content you make, like it's none of it's easy. Uh, it all, it all takes to, it all requires a bunch of people to be committed to the same vision and to make it come to life. So no matter what you're doing, whether it's music videos podcasts uh big narrative films i will say though with the narrative films though it just feels like that there's a there's a i get more of a sense of that mm. you know that wow this is a it only takes the person two and a half hours to watch it but how long did it take us to make it you know like we're talking years you One have to have years. a sense of the big picture before yeah you exactly yeah. exactly and it starts from the very first stages in pre-production uh and i i sometimes when i you know work with other people or i'm on films and i see other films i'm like how did they make this happen uh, because like it's just crazy i because i think sometimes it's crazy to me that you know there was nothing it just like all started out with like uh, ideation, it, like a script on paper, and those words turn into like a moving image. Like that, that whole thing, that idea to me is just crazy, and it's the only thing I've ever really wanted to do. Are there any yeah. particular editors, film editors, or movies that stand out to you as like being really, really good, and people you would kind of look up to? Actually, one of my favorite movies. Uh, is one called 1917 where the first shot in the movie lasts like 20 minutes Chris I Nolan. think yeah I don't know who edited it though um but like there's only it's 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 made to seem like there is no edits but like that's that's exactly it like you know it's a really good ed edited movie if you can't even notice the edits that's so yeah. Yeah. it's just like um so that one 
I know that it only has like four or five edits in it, but like cuts. Yeah, cuts. I guess is what you call it. But um, and also just imagining the guy who is holding focus for that camera on that movie, like holding focus on a camera for twenty minutes straight. I, and then you know it's like it seems like a whole choreographed thing if you're gonna shoot a movie like that. Like everybody's got to be on the same page at the same time for the for you to make that kind of movie and so that that was really more of a production based movie i guess but um i would be very interested interested to see like how that came together in the timeline you know in the editing software uh because like i'm I've, I've, that's kind of the only movie like that that i've seen uh where they don't really like cut from image to image they just you know kind of roll with it <clears throat> But, um, yeah. This episode of The Creative Truth is sponsored by Colas Modern, a family-owned art and design studio focused on producing contemporary furniture and home decor based right here in Savannah, Georgia. The company is owned by David and Lara Colas. David is a former podcast guest, so if you haven't listened to that one, go check it out. All of their furniture and home goods are designed and manufactured right here in Savannah, Georgia, handmade, uh, including this coffee table, which is like an absolute favorite of mine. So if you're looking for a personal gift with a story behind it, you can check out some of their unique cutting boards, so like their butler board, their cleaver board, or their fruit board, and more. You can follow them on Instagram at shopmodernheritage or find them online at shopmodernheritage.com. That's on Instagram. Instagram at Shop Modern Heritage or online at shopmodernheritage.com. Have your uh, parents and grandparents and friends, have they all, like, when you said you were going to go to SCAD and you want to study, like, film editing, what, what, how do people react to that? <laughs> it, was a, it was a bunch of mixed reactions. Like, uh, my parents are very supportive. Um, I, I wouldn't be here if they weren't, but... Um, I, I had a few people in high school say, uh, they were, they were like, you sure about that? And, you know, the whole starving artist, uh, kind of stigma, uh, that's what they were thinking that I was going to be in the future. And, um, other people were like, yeah, go ahead, do it, do what you like, pursue it. And then, uh, some other people were like, that's weird. Cause they, you know, like in my, I think I'm out of at least in my class my graduating class out of high school i'm like the only person who's like is pursuing film so i guess it kind of just like shocks them they're like oh this guy's not going to be an engineer he's not he doesn't really want to go to clemson or any you know pursue any of those type of careers um so i think it was just also that they're like oh i've never heard of somebody going into film before but then i'm like well, somebody's got to do it like, do you think people are born creative or you think it's how they're brought up and they become creative with time? Interesting. Um, I don't think it's, I think it's something that you are brought up, brought up with, or it's just like what interests you. Like, you know, some people like my brother, he, uh, all he wants to do is play soccer and he does have like creative aspects to him. Like he makes, uh, highlight reels and videos of himself playing soccer on he posts them on Instagram and TikTok and all that but the kid wants to play soccer he has like no creative ambition of making videos or any type of art so um I also think it's just what attracts you and uh, and your interest I think uh depend on you know how you're brought up so uh and what you're exposed to so what did your parents do to kind of get you uh, interested in, in this? Are, so are they I, I think enough? that, yeah, you know, the reason I got into film, I, I think about this a lot actually, is my dad used to work at a movie theater and my mom used to work at a movie theater. Now they never like made films. They were never into filmmaking. But I think that that's, that has a large part. I think it's significant. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a yeah. large part to do with like why I got into film. Um and I, I didn't think about that until probably, uh, well, actually my mom brought it up and cause I was talking to her the, uh, the other week and she was like, or I asked her, I was like, I wonder why I got into film. And she's like, well, you do remember that me and your dad used to work in a movie theater. And I'm like, well, it's not really filmmaking. But then I thought about it. I'm like, that 
it definitely has something to do with it because my grandfather he, owned a video store did he really mm-hmm. like a blockbuster type yeah, of video store yeah it wasn't blockbuster but it was like a like an off-brand blockbuster thing oh that's cool that's cool yeah, which, I'm, i remember i remember like blockbuster was still around when i was really young yeah like i was like four or five and then Redbox. Yep, yeah, Redbox came, and then streaming services came. Um, but yeah, I remember going to Blockbusters uh, when I was really young. You know, renting movies, all that. I mean, just it is something that uh, me and my family have always been really into is just watching movies and TV shows. And I guess like for other families that like to be outdoors more or like to do other things more than maybe that kid is probably not going to grow up to be a filmmaker. Um, so I'm, I definitely think it's more of how you're brought up, uh, than something that you're born with. So watching me, well, now you've been to some of our brainstorming sessions Yep. and then you've been on set when we're, uh, making something, producing something. And then and I say set very loosely. <laughs> and then you're actually putting stuff together in, in post. Uh, how is my process in creating video different than kind of what they're teaching you in school? Yeah, like in school, I'm getting taught everything from logistics to, you know, it's not just uh, on, on film sets, they are there's so much to think about for film sets it's like the food for the crew and cast it's the Crafty. Craft service. it's not just like actually making the movie it has so, it, there's so much more aspects to it so um the so to answer your question like the sets that we're on together they seem to uh we're collaborating a lot with clients obviously and like film you're not really like collaborating with clients so that's a cool part that i that i enjoy about the sets with you um is like the person who's asking us for a video they also want to help make it and that's pretty cool to me um but the film sets that i'm on at scatter more uh you know somebody wrote and direct and wrote it it's their creation they should really be controlling how this is being made so it's not that it's less collaborative i don't want to say that but you know when you're given a script, this is written by somebody who put a lot of time and effort into writing it, and um, it should be more of what they want than what everybody wants, if that makes sense. Um, like, again, with the videos that we make, uh, it seems more like, uh, you know, we want to make a video that everybody enjoys, like, not just the clients, but us too and um but in film it's a little different you know you just kind of like you you see the script and you're like all right i gotta make this but like it's more on the fly with uh your sets which is uh a new it's eye-opening and it's new experiences so it's something like videography is very different from film totally yeah totally um i mean they have a lot of similarities but um yeah film sets are I get. I would call them more intense than videography sets. They're so um, big that you have to have all the cadence and rules and like the reason all of and those then COVID, processes exist. Co- COVID messed everything up with, you know, as far as like, at, at one point SCAD had a rule where only ten uh, people could be on a set at once because of COVID, and you know, some sets you can get away with that, but other movies require a lot of you know, uh, a lot of different people of different backgrounds and expertise. So, um, COVID's definitely hasn't helped at all mm-hmm. with that. Well, there's also certain rules with production. Like if you, I believe in Savannah, don't quote me on this. If you've got a crew of more than four people, four people on a set at any given time, you need a permit for that. Yeah. See, there's also the permits. Like, so there was this class I took my freshman year is, uh, called pre-production and um, a lot of that class focused on, you know, logistics, you know, getting uh, or bu- also budgeting. So it's more basically like learning how to become a producer. So getting uh, 
you know the re- the release forms for the cast and crew um you got to think about food you got to think about locations and you got to think about you know what what are the laws of like georgia and you know film sets and uh one i remember there was this project for that class we actually had to have a cop uh on one of the sets because it had like a more violent scene and then like because there's been instances where people have shot films with like a violent scene and people actually thought somebody was like getting robbed or and then you gotta so in order to do that in order to you know not freak out everybody you know you usually have a cop on scene saying that this is just a movie but then you got to pay that cop you know they're not going to just sit there for free and so there's a lot to think about with uh gets expensive quick it gets way. really expensive like before i got to scad before i was really on set so i was like oh, all you have to do is pay for camera equipment and you know pay the actors it's like no it's so much more than that it's you know a lot of film work doesn't have to do with film a lot of it like for example like in editing like most of my time when i'm on a project isn't spent editing it's like spent exporting files and uh bringing in files um so it's not just the, yeah there's a creative aspect to like the film industry but there's also like a less creative aspect and it's more like logistics and uh other tedious work that comes with it um but I mean, I still enjoy that work because if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be doing it. But, um, yeah, it was definitely since coming to SCAD, it's, uh, helped me realize that there's a whole different, and then there's like business sides, like how, how we market our movie, like how do we target a demographic for a certain movie? You know, there's so much to think about, you know, from start to finish with a film. Uh, that I think a lot of people overlook. They're just mm-hmm. like, oh, you go shoot it, you edit it, and that's it. No, it's you gotta. It's there's a whole business side to it, which is really cool. What are some different parts of of the edit, the post production process, on like a longer feature film? Because I know we were talking about foley the other day and color and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think the. Uh, Do you want to specialize in anything in particular? I just like make. I just like cutting movies together. Um, no, I, I do, like, whenever I work on projects, I, you know, I'm, uh, sometimes they, the director will bring, will say, oh, I have my own colorist, or we'll have somebody else color it, or we'll just send it off to uh, people who are more into sound design, but, um, some, but there's also times where uh, I do some of that stuff, uh, like, there's one that I'm working on now where, um, you know, I found, uh, some of the music off of motion array and, you know, I thought it was just going to be put in there as filler until they, you know, found a composer to like make the music to it. But then he was, but then the director was really happy with how it was coming out and he just wanted to keep that music. So sometimes it's as simple as just like pulling music and, you know, making it fit right into the timeline. But other times, uh, I've also worked on projects where we have, like, we get real film composers, and they make music from scratch for our movie, which is also really cool. Uh, I, I think I, yeah, I just enjoy seeing that, that part of the film process, too. Like, the whole, you know, you, at that point, you're not even just creating a movie, you're creating music, too which is really cool. Um, so when you graduate, you're going to graduate in May of 2022, is that right? I'm actually not, I'm not exactly sure when, what quarter I'm graduating uh, on. I think fall 20, either fall or winter of 2022, somewhere around there. What are you going to do? Any thoughts on where, where you might go or what you definitely, definitely don't want to do? You definitely do want to do. Have you started to kind of dial in on what you're going to do after you graduate? Honestly, I haven't thought about it much, um, which I should start. Uh, I've always pictured myself being in, like, bigger cities, you know, when I graduate. Um, 
So I guess that's one thing. But right, like L.A. or where else? L.A., New York, Chicago, Atlanta, uh, San Francisco. You know, somewhere, somewhere huge. That's just like, a, and that's that's not even like. I've always, ever since I was young, I've always pictured myself living in a bigger city. Um, but also at the same time, like younger people tend to live in big cities and then like they move out when they get older because they have i don't know more money than they used to families Uh, yeah families you know things change so many different parts of life change and you're like then you realize oh i you know i like living in the big city but this is like not the most practical thing for me at this point so yeah what was the question again so what you're going to do after graduation, what you're thinking. My goal is to either have you employed, uh, you know, working with me still or, you know, get you, land you that, that gig, you know? Yeah, I, I haven't, because like, ever since I got this job, I was like, okay, I could definitely see myself doing this too in the future. So it's just, I, I really don't know. I, I really want to cut the big movies. But I also, again, like, I like, you know, doing stuff for online content and, like, videography stuff also uh, attracts me. Um, the game's changing. I mean, features are even changing. You know, there's, like, there's longer form TV shows are more, like, narrative. You mm-hmm. know, Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones. Like, yeah. That's, like, a long movie, really. Like, yeah, The Mandalorian. You know, mm-hmm. like, that kind, of, that kind of stuff is, uh, is it's it's a tv show but it's made like a movie which is also cool um it's not like a you know sitcom like the big bang theory where they they can shoot that whole episode in a day maybe two days but um so i guess like yeah it definitely the stuff that even if i do start working on tv shows i want it to feel like a movie you know that i want to feel like that i'm working on a movie um so i I definitely know I want to be in post-production after I graduate, but honestly, I've also been thinking about, you know, how many people get the job they want right out of college. So, you know, I'm also thinking about, all right, whatever just gets me into the industry, whatever just like to get my foot in the door and then, you know, kind of work your way up. Cause I've, I've been on sets where, you know, I didn't start out as the editor, but then, you know, I got to know people and then, you know, make connections are like, Oh, do you want to edit this? And then, you know, so I've gotten opportunities like that, and I kind of can see like, oh, this is really how the industry works. It's like you kind of have to prove yourself. Maybe not not prove yourself, but like, I guess as far as editors are concerned, and, and you're not getting like that editing job, you're starting out as like a PA. Just like do the do the job you best the, as to the best of your ability, and then people will notice that, and they'll be like, oh, if he puts that much effort and work into you know a position he doesn't even like or enjoy or doesn't want to do like imagine the effort and work he'll put in to like if he was on the position that he did want like for editing like so that's that kind of is my thought process when like uh as far as you know um landing the actual position that you want is uh now it'd be great like if I got an editing job right out of college, but like at the same time, you got to think about, Oh, that might not be the case. You might be starting out as like a production assistant or, you know, Aaron boy, something like something of the sorts. Um, so you're cool with like working it up, working up the ladder. Basically. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely cool with that because like, I understand that, uh, you know, some, especially like if you're going to have somebody edit your movie, you kind of have to like trust them a certain way. And so, like, you got to gain that trust, especially if, like, it's people you never worked with. All right. What's something you've learned either working with me or working on the creative truth? Whew. Practical knowledge. Something that I've learned here. Don't say nothing. <laughs> oh, it's definitely not nothing. Um... I've definitely learned, as far as editing is concerned, like new workflows and, you know, learning Premiere versus Media Composer. Uh, like, usually when I do uh, 
narratives and you know like film stuff it's using media composer but on this videography side it's using premiere and after effects which i usually like i've we get those things for free as SCAD students but I, I just never really used them as much and so it's like opening up uh it kind of like makes me think differently when i go to edit a media composer too like i can see the differences and similarities more between the two mm. software so that's one thing um there have also been uh moments where um like the business side of things i see you you know having meetings with clients and uh the amount of emails you get per day it's insane i've learned that you know to really have your own videography business is again there's like a business side to it there's not just the creative aspect uh it's mostly just the business stuff. yeah for you at this point it's just mostly business yeah, yeah. um I'm trying to think what else what else have I learned? All right, how about a favorite episode of The Creative Truth and why? Oh, I already Sh know the answer. Shawnee and Khalil's episode. Yeah. Um, I have no idea why that guy isn't famous yet. He uh, shout out really Khalil. Yeah, shout out really yeah, Khalil. Um, didn't he? Didn't that song like make the charts in Turkey or something? Uh, I think he said he has some downloads in Japan. That's crazy. That that's insane to like this guy from savannah making music and now people in to or japan knows who he is because of his music that's so cool um and also like at the end of that episode i got to put in like the music video and i watched it and i was like it was fun it was fun um i also thought it was cool that uh shawnee was a cinematographer in savannah that didn't go to scad but she, w she went to georgia southern i believe right? so yeah. yeah um that's really cool too is to see uh how other people kind of like made their you know everybody has their own way to success and you know mine is going to scad but it reminds me that you know not every artist filmmaker goes to scad because sometimes i get caught up in like oh i go to such a great school but like people are doing some pretty cool shit uh you know who don't go to scad who you know some of them are self-taught but some of them are just going to other schools um so yeah, I, I guess so. I've always really loved music. I mean, who doesn't? But so that that'd be a reason that I like you know the Shawnee and Khalil episode a lot, and then um, also having you know in that same episode a cinematographer on the show. It's really cool. Uh, two areas, you know, film and music that I like really love. So yeah, Shawnee and Khalil's episode was it was a lot of fun to edit. Um, you're a little bit earlier on in your career, but let's, uh, let's, what advice would you give to yourself? You have a cell phone that can call back in time. You can call your 17 year old self. What advice would you give yourself? So you're like a junior, senior in high school. I wish I was like more involved in high school and just cause I, I really like, if I'm being honest in high school, I was kind of an under, underachiever. I just, nothing not that I didn't care, it's just that I didn't care about the classes I was taking in high school. Like, nothing, it didn't seem like anything really appealed to me. And so I guess the, just, and I'll, even in the earlier days of me going to SCAD, I wish I would've gotten a lot more projects. Um, and so like, the only way to get better at, the best way to get better at something is to just do it. And that's what I wish I kind of, I wish I kind of knew that more earlier on. Um, and, you know, also, uh, don't be afraid to kind of pitch yourself. Cause I, I'm, I'm more of a, I guess you could call me shy. I'm not the most outgoing person. So I, I kind of, and like SCAD, you know, since being at SCAD, it's helped me with that. I, you know, I, I'm still not the most outgoing person, but it's really, you know, helped me since high school. So I, my 17, man, I, looking back at myself at 17 now, you know, that, that was already four years ago. I'm like, the two, the two things I, those are the two things that uh, I, I think about that, think about a lot is, you know, what, what how would this be how would it be different today if you know i was more outgoing 
in my younger years or if you know i did uh if i did get on more projects uh earlier on but um you know i'm starting to get on more and uh i keep getting these uh random opportunities whether it's from you know professors who have like uh they know a filmmaker who needs like a trailer or something and then um you know other scat students you know hitting me up to like would you be interested in editing this and you know sometimes i'll say no because there's only so much i can do at one time like sometimes i have like three or four different edits at one time and then your work on top of like the work here on top of it so you know also learning when to say no is another thing because like uh last year i was just like so anxious to i guess it's because of covid because like it kind of slowed down production of film and whatnot and i was just like really eager to get back into it and then i was just like saying yes to every project and then i just got like so overwhelmed at one point last year it's like i'm on six different projects right now so learning when to say no get more involved and I guess, like, be more outgoing kind of goes hand in hand with being more involved. Um, but, yeah, that's what I that's what I wish I would have had a better grasp of back when I was 17, 18. But, uh... Cool. Any yeah. other uh, closing words? How can people find you? Instagram, Hayes Griffin with two N's at the end. Uh... My website is hayesgriffinarts.com and under on my Instagram and my website you can find the rest of my socials. I have like Twitter and all that too. Um, I never use Twitter though. And I think you're in the description of every episode at this point with a link to your website. So. Oh really? Yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. That's, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, Sweet. Right. So. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for all the work you do on the Creative Truth. Yep, it's so, it's so much fun, and I'm finally glad I have my own episode now. Yeah. What is the season two episode? Uh, it's not. I don't. I don't do seasons because, like, in the early days of the Creative Truth, we wouldn't do as many interviews as we do now. Yeah. So it's kind of like this weird. I don't really even know how many episodes we've done because we've got more on Podbean and the and iTunes than we do on YouTube. So yeah. I, I yeah. say this is like episode thirty six. Okay, but yeah, I've, I don't really know. I mean, it seems like you're recording one of these podcasts every, uh, once, every, a once a week yeah. at least. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. How how long was the podcast uh being aired before I started editing it? Um, so we had started it in April of 2019, and then it was like every month, and then through COVID 2020. Yeah. We didn't. We did it like maybe three times. Yeah. And then um, I started every week in January. So you kind of came on right when I was taking it more seriously. Right. Right. Wow. So. Can't believe it's. You know, January isn't that far. It's almost literally been I a know. year. I know. It's crazy. That is wild. Yeah. That is wild. Well, uh, yeah. You you guys will hear more from Hayes in upcoming episodes. Uh, in other upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. If you have episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at hello at creative-truth.com. You can get uh, swag. We're going to launch a new store pretty soon here uh, at creative-truth.com. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave me a good review. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we will talk to you in the next episode. Peace. Now you got to start editing this thing. Yeah, I do. Let me get to work. All right. <laughs> All right.